And I'm really pleased to have in the studio with me George Gell. He's an activist and executive director with the People's Action Institute. Peoplesaction.org is the website. George, welcome to the program. It's great to be here. Great to have you with us, you know, physically in the studio, too. Yeah. So, um, geez, there's so much, so much to talk about. But what is the focus, the principal focus of the People's Actions, Action Institute? I mean, we're what a you're, what mass you guys are doing. grassroots people's organization. We have hundreds of thousands of members in 30 states across the country and do base building on the ground in urban and rural communities. And it's really an economic and racial justice agenda. We came out hard after the financial crisis to hold the big banks accountable, put more people in the streets uh, after the financial crisis than anybody, um, and keep moving to try to help we build a bigger movement for economic and racial justice. But at the heart of it, is organizing and starting where people are at. And if there was an ever a time we needed to double down on organizing, it's now. Yeah. So what does organizing look like? If, like really? If, 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 you know, what you're doing or if somebody is listening or watching right now and they say, you know, I want to I want to participate in organizing or I want to be one, among the organized. Yeah, yeah, know, exactly. What do people do? Well, once people join, which we can talk about how that happens, we go out and paid staff and volunteers go out and knock on doors, talk to people in communities, not just around elections, but year round, find out what people are upset about bring people together, take a problem that a bunch of people are experiencing in a community, pr probably not talking about, mm -hmm. get in a room, a church basement, a community center, a front porch of a family farm, and figure out what the strategy is to how we take on this thing. It could be corporate agriculture moving into Iowa. It could be gentrification in a neighborhood in Chicago. It could be, uh, you know, some toxic dump in a poor community of color. And people come together, build a strategy, and build power but over time, figure out, I think people run up against roadblocks and say, oh, if we don't get big money out of politics, we're not going to be able to win. If we don't figure out how to compete in elections, we're not going to be able to win. If we don't shape the dominant worldview in this country. So through a process, really, of doing the work, people become more engaged, more politicized, more clear on our need to build power. So people can go like to our website, peoplesaction.org, and find our affiliates in the 30 states and join through there. They can join the online list. Now, the last thing I say is like a big part of what we do is train people because we believe the key, if we're going to take on the Koch brothers and big money in politics, we actually need volunteers to basically become full-time organizers. I mean, actually to put tons of time and not hope the paid staff come and do it and I'll show up at a meeting here and there, but everyday people in neighborhoods got to go out and recruit their neighbors and bring them into the organization. It's the only way we can win in elections right now. So you're, you're in the middle, on the ground, in, in, the, in the center of the, of the, of the hurricane here. Um, what are the, in your opinion, and 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 also in your experience, mm -hmm. what are the issues that are floating to the top? What are the primary issues? What are the things that that, you know, for example, I, I would say, money in politics. You know, the, reversing Buckley, 1976, yep. Yep. Um, when the court for the very first time said giving money to a politician is not a bribery. It's it's a behavior that's regulated. It's free speech. It's regulated yep. by the First Amendment or protected by the First Amendment. That, in my mind, is the most important thing, in, period. But it's really hard to get a whole bunch of people really excited about that and, you know, all cranked up. And so you say, you know, save Medicare. Well, saving Medicare is really important, too. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's people who are getting Medicare or people who are expecting Medicare and people who are paying, you know, who are. So what what are the issues, number one, that you mm -hmm. think are the most important? And, what mm -hmm. are the, and number two, what are the issues that are getting people most fired up? And, and, and what kind of intersectionality is there? I think, like, if we want to dramatically shift how things operate it's the structural things like money and politics like trade the fundamentals of the economy who's running the federal reserve some of those things um money and politics like you can get people engaged in for a while and after a while it's hard to line up some wins on that so how do you keep people engaged so on the but people really care about money and politics and more they go up against big oil or the big banks or the big prisons even if you didn't start with a money and politics frame, you eventually land on the fact that you got to do it. But sustaining those campaigns, honestly, it is, it's tricky. Are you guys part of the move to amendorg uh, coalition just to, to amend the Constitution? We're part of that. We're part of the democracy initiative. I mean, it's a big focus for us. Um, and any kind of structural change is a big focus for us. But uh, on the ground, I mean, mass incarceration is, is huge in cities. And I mean, people are organizing big numbers of people with very limited resources. So that's clear. I think immigration reform is big for people. Clean water. We're finding a really interesting uh, urban, rural, native coalition emerging around clean water and infrastructure and jobs. That is big, not being reported that, on. A did big that one. precede uh, the Dakota Access Pipeline? I think we you know, we saw it 
in with Flint, and then everybody was like, oh, we've got, there are Flints all over across the country. And what's right. interesting is you have kind of urban infrastructure issues. You got corporate agricultural runoff. But then when the Dakota Pipeline hit, I think everybody was like, yes, this is right. And it's actually a place where we can build across racial lines, build past this urban-rural divide. So that would be another big one. You know, at the end of the day, good old, I mean, I think people still want to see some accountability with the big banks. People know that the financial sector controls the economy. Uh, figuring out the wins along the way, like state banks and, and regulation at the state level has got to be key. Some of the stuff like protecting Dodd-Frank can be a little more esoteric for people at the end of the day. Yeah. So, and and um, what do you what do you identify right now coming out of the Trump administration or the or the evolving Trump administration <laughs> as the big battles that we're going to really have to fight? Yeah, I think that. The things I think he'll probably move are the things I actually don't think he has a mandate on. So if he really moves on the wall, on mass deportation, and a Muslim registry, I don't think he has a mandate on those things. But I think what we could, I think it's very possible. Well, he at least campaigned on those things. He did. Oh, yeah. But he also campaigned on pre preserving and protecting Social Security and Medicare. And he's already put people in place. He put Tom Price in charge of this, who doesn't want that. He campaigned on improving our public schools. He's putting Betsy DeVos in. She's going to, you know, she, she'd rather see, I believe, private schools. Um, he is breaking promises left and right, and I, I, I don't watch Fox News. I, I, Ellen was on a little bit ago, and she's actually on Fox News mm -hmm. real regularly, and I wanted to ask her, are they telling the voters, you know, the Fox News voters who put Trump into office, that, he, that he's already breaking his, his promises, that he no. lied to them? No, I think we got to go do that. And I think it's what you just said. I feel like he talked a lot about taking on Wall Street and the court uh, carried Bringing jobs interest, back home. Jobs back home, the revolving door. I think that's one of the biggest yeah, Some of these lies. types of things where, you know, we could agree with him. Oh, those are the things I actually think he has a mandate on, but he's not yeah. going to do. Some of them he's not going to do. Some of them his fellow Republicans won't let him do. I think it's up to, I mean, your show and a lot of us going around the country going not just to the urban centers, but to smaller towns and, and rural communities and making sure people know that a lot of this was a lie and we're not even, hasn't even been inaugurated and we're seeing signs of that. And I think there will be a, a percentage. I, I think a big part of the, the base that elected Trump are traditional Republicans and Tea Party Republicans, but I think a percentage from places like where you and I grew up, they're just like, hey, I'm going to give this guy a shot. I like the economic populism he's talking about. I think he has no intention of delivering on it. Yeah. Yeah, tragically. Right. You know, right. I, I mean, <laughs> I, I actually had some hope that he, he, getting elected president, might actually keep those promises uh, for two reasons. One, it would be good for the country. Mm -hmm. Number two, it would create a war within the Republican yeah. Party. <laughs> it would have been a... <laughs> But I don't think he's going to do either one. It doesn't look like George it. George Gell, uh, activist, executive director, People's Action Institute. Hang on just a second here. This is the Tom Hartman Program. PeoplesAction.org is the website. You can tweet him at George Gell, G-O-E-H-L. Hey, George, thank you. Hey, appreciate being here.